shit! I rest my shit. Oh, this time I didn't forget. That's a big Twinkie. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. Um, welcome to another opening night. I'm here with the lovely Nikita. How are you tonight? Okay, how are you? Good. Um, we um, yes, we did get a box of Twinkies this time. Um, for this occasion because um, we just saw. Um, movie that's out right now, uh, Ghostbusters, The New Empire, or The Frozen Empire, no, 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 because The New Empire is next week with uh, Godzilla <laughs> X-Cog, mm -hmm. and, um, so, for those who don't know, um, I've been a very casual Ghostbusters fan, didn't really grow up with it as a kid, except for the show at Universal Studios Florida, I do remember that, and then I've seen the first one once, it was meh when I was watching it, mm -hmm. but then I saw Afterlife a couple of years ago, hence the, the quest for the big Twinkie, which never we never found one. I'm, again, came prepared, and um, I became a Ghostbusters fan after that. I, I thoroughly enjoyed Afterlife. It was, I call it the Ghost Awakens, because it's basically Force Awakens, or as I call it, Ghost Encounters of the Third Kind, because it's very Close Encounters-esque, um, which is a Spielberg alien movie pre-E.T., um, if you haven't seen that, it's a good movie. That's a great movie, Close Encounters. But um, Outcomes does really well, the, the afterlife, and then they say, oh, we're doing another Ghostbusters. I'm like, okay, wow, we live in a timeline where Ghostbusters 4 exists. I don't count 2016 Ghostbusters. That movie sucked. Um, I did not see that. But before we get to this new one, if you had a history of the Ghostbusters, like, have you? what was your history with that? Like, what do you... I watched the old one, so, like, <clears throat> that's what I grew up with. So I haven't watched any of the recent ones. So this, actually, this one was really good, this, surprisingly. This was very good. I actually was surprised, because I heard the critics were kind of mad about it. It was kind of having Ghostbusters 2 problems, all because Ghostbusters 2 didn't do well when that came out, because, fun fact about Ghostbusters 2, I didn't realize this until I saw Oliver Harper's video, video on it, that it was ready to go. It was going to be a big hit. But a week before release, guess what overflowed them and, and they didn't make much money back? Which one? Tim Burton's Batman. Uh... It came out the week after Ghostbusters 2. So when Batman 89 became the biggest thing in, in 1989, the, the box office dropped for Ghostbusters 2. That's why it took forever to make Ghostbusters 3, mm. which was Afterlife. But this is Ghostbusters 4. Or Why didn't they call it Ghostbusters 4 as an empire? Ah, yeah. that's funny. <laughs> so I, it, so basically, it picks up two years after the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, you have all the old and new Ghostbusters all kind of working co uh, coinciding with each other on business. Um, you got uh, Phoebe, I think, is the daughter's name of uh, Harold Ramis's character. Yeah. Um, she looks just like him. It's it, funny. It, well, I mean, that was the idea in the last one, is that she's supposed to take from her grandfather. Mm -hmm. um, so you have that. You have Paul Rudd back being sort of this from teacher to stepfather a little bit. Because yeah. in the first one, he was their teacher in school when they moved into the small little town. But now he's sort of becoming a surrogate father figure, um, like an adoptive stepfather what? to the, the two kids. So... Basically, uh, you know, they're just doing their ghost busting thing. Then they get caught by the mayor of New York, who is literally the, the head of police from the first movie, who was like, shut this all down, shut this all down. And he's the one that Bill Murray says, it's true, Your Honor. This man has no dick. <laughs> like, literally dickless. Um, he's back, and he's been wanting to get these Ghostbusters shut down for 40 yeah. years. Because I know why they put it out this year. This year is the 40th anniversary of the original Ghostbusters oh, movie. Oh, that's a great So it's way. the 40th anniversary of, oh. of the film. So 40th anniversary, right. we have a fourth movie, and it's a frozen empire. Yeah. So, basically, they're doing their shtick. Actually it, kind of, actually, it opens in 1902 New York, where these firefighters um, kind of come in to check out, and they actually use the old firehouse, the Ghostbusters firehouse. They go in there, and um, they discover the like a bunch of people are dead in this room, and that's where they find that little mat the MacGuffin orb. That yeah. is the key point of the film. It holds an ancient um, frozen spirit who looks like, uh, basically, if Frozen fucked uh, Steppenwolf from Justice League. Yeah. That's what that's <laughs> what this villain is. Um, and basically, it's all about the Ghostbusters just kicking ass again, uh, taking care of ghosts. Uh, previous ghosts from the, other, the movies come back, and 
It's a good time. I like how they also, because it's weird, because there was a theory that Ghostbusters 2 was not canon um, with the afterlife, but now they confirm, yeah, Ghostbusters 2 did happen. And not only did that happen, but the commercials happened for the old toys and the cereal. They had Ghostbusters cereal when that came out. Ooh. Um, it was marshmallows, obviously. And they had, like, and they even made, like, the Ray Parker Jr. music video canon. No. So basically, when the Ghostbusters were popular, Ray Morton just wrote a song about them, and that's them actually dancing to the song in, oh, in New York. Yeah, yeah. So, I, it was, I didn't know if that was canon, but it's canon. So, let me get, so, is the animated series canon? Because there was a cartoon yeah. after Ghostbusters yeah. 2. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it adds more to the mythos. It brings back stuff from all three previous movies. Uh, no, no 2016, thank God. Um, <laughs> and it was fun. I, like, I, I'll say this about this one. It wasn't as good as the last one, but I still had fun with it. Critics have been actually kind of bashing this and saying it's boring and the pacing's off and it's not that good and the villains was it. Like, I understand, but I would actually tell everybody, just ignore the critics and go see this. This yeah. was fun. It was just a fun movie. Never listen to critics. It, it's go weird. for yourself. Because Form I've... your own opinion. I've never seen Ghostbusters 2. I've never. I've only seen the first one, and I've only seen Afterlife and this. I have you skipped. You haven't it. seen Ghostbusters too. I haven't seen the second one with uh, like the fucking uh, the the fucking uh, guy. I forget what his name is. Uh, the villain in the second one, mm -hmm. because in the in Afterlife, because you didn't see it, they brought back Gozer, who was the villain in the first one. Uh, they brought back Gozer and uh, Vince Clortho and Zool, the two uh, little devil things. So, oh. um, yeah, they brought those back. Um, but this one, actually, what I love, Slimer's back, and much well better done here. I will say this, too. The effects are great in this. Yeah, it's superb. Like, the special... This okay. high quality. It was great. The special effects were good. Uh, the characters were good. It was actually... The acting was really good. Acting was really good. You yeah. know, the, first, the afterlife, you might cry, because there is moments of really good moments in the first there one. There was a lot of sad moments in this one. Well, because, Closer um, to the end. The, the first one, the biggest saddest thing is relying on the death of Harold Ramis, who uh, passed away, mm -hmm. um, and relying on Egon to kind of uh, discuss it. Like, I'll say this, because... When uh, Phoebe is playing chess um, in Central Park, which that's one of my biggest a little problem, a little pet peeve. What? Who the fuck goes to play chess in the middle of the night in New York City, yeah. let alone being a child? Yeah, she's 15. She's 15. Who lets their kid go out in New York City in Central Park in the middle of the night to play chess by herself? Like, unless you've watched too much of Jerry's game, that Pixar short, I don't yeah. see this working out. <laughs> Yeah, That's um, crazy. But she meets this ghost who's, um, I swear to God, she looks like like um, Anna Sofa Rob from uh, fucking uh, Anna Sophia Rob. Yeah, from uh, Bridge to Terabithia. Yeah. So, oh. oh, so this is what happened to her when she drowned. <laughs> she became a ghost. Although it's funny because it's canon. Uh, it's canon. Well, G Casper, the movie from the '90s with Christina Ricci, that's Ghostbusters canon because you have Dan Aykroyd coming in to try to take care of the ghosts in the house, and he's like, "What are you gonna call?" Someone else. Oh, well, they kept referring to the song. Yeah, that, that was I'll, cheesy. That was cheesy. But the, cute. The song's great though. That's still a yeah. great song. Um, I listen to that every Halloween. But um, yeah, so um, the main evil character was scary. There's a lot of jump scares in this movie. No, well, listen, it's a horror comedy. I was actually, I think, out of all of them, this is probably the scariest yeah, one. Yeah, it was. Like, it was... there's some like, whoa, okay, I did not see that coming. And they made some of these mo uh, ghosts that we know. It's like, oh shit. Um, again, I think it's half of Slimer, like a lot of Slimer and all the effects, a lot of it was CGI, I guess, to decrease the budget. Uh, but there were some moments, I swear, there were some practical effects used in this, like really? in terms of just compositing the ghosts. Yeah. Like the ghost girl, that was really good effect. I was, like, I was getting Casper vibes yeah. with, the, with that effect. But then also some of Slimer, when you see like his arm and stuff, there's moments where it looks like a puppet. Yeah. Because in the first one, it was a puppet. It was a hand puppet that they filmed on, like, some other mat, yeah. and they added it into the shot. Like, I could do that. Like, you got... We didn't have... We don't have it with us, but they have these uh, popcorn, popcorn buckets, buckets that look like Slimer, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to use this someday. Oh, you should show them. Can you insert a, a I picture? I could, yeah. I'll insert a picture of just showing what the Slimer looks like in this video. So, um, it's a really cool popcorn bucket. And apparently, like, they've been selling like crazy here. I know... Actually, in the States, they have a different popcorn bucket. They have yeah. the ghost trap as yeah. a popcorn bucket. So you open it up, and it's a popcorn bucket. That's but I like sick. Slimer. I like the, the Slimer, Slimer one. Cool. Um, the puffs were in there. They were cute. Uh, the mini-seepable, they were a carry-on from the, from the last one. 
And uh, and there is a post credit scene where like they're driving a Stay Puft truck, so it makes you think, oh, okay. I'm gonna be honest. I, if they make another one, can we just get Stay Puft Marshmallow Man back? Oh, yeah, the, the, the big giant it. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I don't care. He is an iconic. Like He's so cute. It, it's so cute. I love it. And uh, doesn't he light up? Are you I supposed think to so. light? Yeah. Oh. Oh, how did you do that? He pressed his chest. He's like he's like the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> no, but instead of going, hmm, he's going. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with this ghost girl who who looks like Anna Sofa Rob's character from Bridge of Terabithia, they explain that she died from like a fire, like she burned. burned her, didn't her she like light accidental? Yeah, or I think she actually. They said she did it intentionally, but really? then she regretted it right oh. after. So I'm thinking, oh no, it's Ember McLean from Danny Phantom. Oh no, this is what Randy Stare always wants. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like, I did like their chemistry. I did like that they kind like obviously like there's moments of like like mystery with this character. Yeah. But overall, she was kind of a good guy. I don't know if the other like I don't remember if the previous two, the first two Ghostbusters established that some ghosts are good guys. Like unless you count Casper, which is canon, which means some ghosts can be good guys because yeah. the friendly ghost. So I was getting a little bit of Casper vibes with with those two actually, and um, I, I don't know it was actually kind of cool. Um, it's pretty funny. You were laughing a lot. There were some great moments when they saw had the uh, Harold and Kumar guy. Yeah. Um, in this movie, <laughs> who is literally like Zuko the Firebender from Last Airbender. I didn't watch Last Airbender. I've never watched I Avatar. I probably that. won't ever. But uh, he's like the Firebender, who's like the Mag the McMuffin, the MacGuffin of the movie, who's gonna fight the thing. And at first I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be forced, this isn't going to be good. Surprisingly funny. Yeah. He was like the funniest character in the movie. He was really good. He was, he was he funny. Was, he was really good. Um, he needed that comedic relief because it was dark and intense. I like too that he was actually, because like the, the uh, proton packs are a, a nuclear accelerator, so yeah. that's basically fire. He's able to bend the, the ghost, the proton pack beam, which is cool. Although I like the idea, of, I like the villain is able to actually freeze the proton packs. That's like, I was like, oh damn, we're fucked. Does that mean the last airbender is canon? No, 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 no. That's a totally different thing. Um, I mean, ask Netflix, because I heard, I heard the Netflix show sucked. It, you know what, guys? I'm sorry, but last airbender can't do it in live action. You just can't do it. This isn't One Piece. You yeah. can't <laughs> do it in live action. Actually, ironic with the trailers, I should bring this up. We got a trailer for some anime. A Spy X family yes. was not expecting it. And I was watching, I'm like, huh. All right, I, I, I'll go see this in theaters. I, I like anime on the big screen. Oh, so. really? Yeah, I've never watched Spy X Family. I think you got to watch a series before, no? Is it on Netflix or is it only on Crunchyroll? It's on uh, Netflix. Oh, it was on it's Crunch, Crunchyroll. Yeah, because Crunchyroll, yeah. I think it's, I think, and I noticed some of the voice actors, I'm thinking, this is Funimation dubbed. So I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll go see this. So that looks interesting. It's like James Bond with like a little like that family family friendly dynamic. Yeah, all right, it looks cheesy. Um, but we got the trailer for Godzilla X Kong, which we're seeing next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got what else? What other trailers did we get? There was like Godzilla X Kong. Bob, Bob Marley. Oh uh, uh, no, no, that was in the pre-show, the pre-show um, before it. Um, but I can't remember what other trailers we got. They didn't show much. They did. It was like Godzilla X Kong. Garfield. Go, the Gar. Okay, you know what? I was scared because Chris Pratt and he's cast and everything. Yeah. Surprisingly, looks kind of funny. That and the Minions. The uh, Despicable Me Four. Right, yeah, yeah, the Despicable Me. I only saw the first one. I did not like it. You will like Rise of Gru? It's so funny. I, I just, I don't know. It's just something about this franchise. It's just, it's, it's oversaturated. Big, yeah, and yeah. it's like, and it's like, hey, Universal. You don't need this. You've got DreamWorks now. You own DreamWorks now. You, you got two of the biggest animation companies under your belt. I mean, granted, Disney has Pixar, and they also bought Blue Sky. Which is the company that makes the Ice Age movies and stuff. They bought those with the Fox merger, but they just shut them down. Wow. So they just shut them down. So you only got one animation kept, but you kept you kept Pixar. You didn't bother to keep Blue Sky. But um yeah, we got a couple trailers on that. Uh but again, it was a good time. And I did like at the end it said uh, for Ivan, uh Ivan yeah. Reitman, who directed the first movie, he passed away after Afterlife came out. And his son actually directed the, the last one. Uh, Jason Reitman did the, did the second one because it's ironic because the first one it was um, it was for Harold Ramis. This yeah. one was for Ivan Reitman, which I thought was sweet. Uh, it's cool to see Annie Potts back as well. Yeah. Um, who uh, you know, Ghostbusters? Do you think this movie's Oscar worthy? No, 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 no. no. This is just a like the effects and stuff. I feel like I'll be mean, like I'll say. 
that big effects maybe but like yeah. anything else no i didn't really f i mean like this feels like a cap uh, a cash grab on the success of the last one and it's also just to celebrate the 40th anniversary of ghostbusters yeah which i mean like you think I, they'll make a next one? Oh, they'll make another one i mean like here's the thing like it's no, here's the thing. It's not getting like bashed, like, oh, it's a piece of shit movie. It's just not, like, right now, movies are not doing well box office wise, yeah. so this is kind of expected. It would not surprise me if they make another one and sort of make a new trilogy. Should this been a Netflix release? No, 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 no. Streaming no. service? No, well, I mean, it's probably going to come to Netflix. It is Sony. But, like, should have. Okay. Mm. Um, it, but it's funny. So, like, it's. With this one, it's more, um,. I feel like they're going to make another one, but it's weird because I'm just going to say this. I know mm -hmm. the focus is a little bad. Um, they should do the next one. They should just cash in, rip off No Way Home, Spider-Man yeah. No Way Home. Because what you should do is do a multiverse story where you open up the multiverse and then boom, 2016 Ghostbusters. Boom, like cartoon, like the like extreme Ghostbusters, like the next round of Ghostbusters. I mean, bring in the filmation Ghostbusters, which is like... <laughs> Before Ghostbusters came out, yeah. was a cartoon show. I think that's the way to go. If you could do that, I'd be okay with that being the last Ghostbusters movie. And, I mean, because here's the thing. 2016 is terrible. It's a piece of shit movie. It is absolute is garbage. Girls? Yeah, um, forget my language. I call it Queef Busters. <laughs> it is bad. It is, like, literally that episode of South Park where, like, the Queef sisters show up with Terrence to replace Terrence and Philip. It is that level of bad, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. The people... The cast and the people behind it, they're good co comedic writers. They just had to work with whatever Sony told them to do, which yeah. sucks. If you And the, here's the thing. The Amazing Spider-Man movies weren't the best, but once they got into the MCU where Andrew Garfield's able to do more and stuff, yeah. they kind of redeemed those movies. I feel like if you brought the female Ghostbusters back and you actually gave them proper written jokes, you gave them proper humor, you didn't politicize the fuck out of it, and you and you just have it where they team up with the other Ghostbusters. So you have like an art. Let's see, they were setting up with this one. This is kind of my biggest problem. With the movie is the villain. Like the villain's great when he finally shows up, but you set up this idea. Oh my God, it's an army of ghosts, a ghost army. Yeah. It's gonna be like the army of darkness, or you know, it's gonna be like we're gonna fight all the previous villains from the past. Um, I feel like what they should do. I love how you have Stay Puff up the whole time. It's so cute. It's just cute. It's cute. Um, but I think what they should do is they kind of didn't make up on that promise because here comes this villain ready to kick their ass. And the whole time they're just holding the fort of the firehouse. The firehouse is our big giant castle. Mm -hmm. And it's a firehouse. It's like, <laughs> come, why aren't y'all in New York kicking ass? Yeah. So... I feel like it's a little lackluster to that extent, mm -hmm. but what they should do is the next one literally make the promise of an army of ghosts versus an army, a Ghostbuster army. That would, yeah. That so would you, you have like a bunch of Ghostbusters right now, but if you add more from the multiverse, yeah, that That'd would be, be cool if they could actually like get all of them in a big army and then fight together. Is that going to include the girls? That's the that thing. Like include <laughs> them, but have them where they're better written yeah. and are actually able to collab with the other Ghostbusters. Like that's how you do it. Like keep them to a small extent role like Bill Murray in this like you only see Bill Murray in like one or two like you see him in the middle of the movie and then he shows up at the end to help out which I thought was okay because Bill Murray's hard to work with from what I heard he's a very oh, really? he is very hard to work with Why? he only picks certain roles <laughs> um oh but Ernie Hudson's the best the, the best of the original er Ernie and Dan are the best parts of the only disappointment no Rick Moranis from, yeah, from why would it, like he's not doing anything. Rick Moranis is kind of kind of retired early, early on. Yeah, because he got his money from Little Shop of Horrors. I heard apparently he was supposed to come back for the Honey I Shrunk the Kids reboot on Disney Plus. They were gonna do a TV yeah. show, but they canceled that show. They they just pulled the plug on it, which I'm like, because like they they, they, why is Rick? I never understood why Rick Moranis left the industry. Oh, so. something happened. Yeah, did it? Okay, interesting. But yeah, with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, we want to actually... Actually, it's getting kind of cold right now. Like, the ice is kind of coming in. Uh, <laughs> ironic. Frozen Empire. Um, I liked it. I had fun with it. It's not the last one, but I enjoyed it. I was very entertained. It's a... Um, it's a 7 out of 10, a 6 or 7. Really? I, I wouldn't put it like two. Like the last one I think was an 8 or 9 for me. So this yeah. one's a little lower, but I still was entertained. I would ignore the critics. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, you'll love it. Turn your brain off. And it, but if you're a casual fan like I am, turn your brain off, have fun. There's a good jokes and it's some a, entertainment yeah, in, in it all. It's great. Uh, your final thoughts. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Well, 
That's our kit. Sometimes I do that. There we go. That happens. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. And I really enjoyed it, honestly. The acting was great. There was a lot of jump scares, which I appreciated. And uh, the humor was on point. It was a very funny yeah, I film. I really recommend this. I was so surprised it was actually good. Would you would you recommend it in theaters or would you recommend it on like streaming? Streaming. Streaming. Yeah, you could stream this. Actually, it was worth seeing on um, the big screen. Though. We we saw Ultra AVX. Yeah. Didn't see, I don't know if this is playing in IMAX. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay IMAX. I wouldn't pay. I would pay like Ultra. Like just whatever screen's available. It's a fun time. Yeah, it was really good. So. Join us next time when the big movie for us of the year on this channel, uh, Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, well, that's a month, the year of the empire, isn't it? Yeah. Um, comes out next week. We'll have an opening night for you ASAP. We've already ordered tickets for it. Yeah, he, yeah, he got us tickets because it's going to be a packed. Oh, it's going to be packed. Oh. It was surprisingly packed at this one. Apparently the screening before this one actually was like packed. Yeah, come search for him. Come search for us. I'll be in Toronto. Him. I'll be at the Scotiabank Theater uh, the Thursday showing. So you can check me out there. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know your thoughts on Frozen Empire in the comments below. Uh, check out uh, my girl's uh, Instagram account and her YouTube channel. I'm sure she would appreciate it. But until the next video, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Big Jack Films and Nikita signing off. And um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's still a big Cheers. Twinkie. Cheers I made sure I made sure not to forget this time. Until the next search for the big Twinkie in Ghostbusters 5. <laughs> <laughs> ah, coming soon. Hopefully Rick Moranis. Hopefully Rick Moranis. Revenge of Moranis. <laughs> we'll see you later. Take it easy. Enjoy yourselves. Home.